The video you're about to watch is really boring. The problem is incest. This is a tactic for us to achieve world domination. I have a huge brain and I'm very smart. One of the biggest issues with being a train driver, right, is that sometimes you run people over. I almost killed my mother. We're not shooting anything other than the podcast. My cat pissed me off. Tell the cat. One way in, one way out. Hey. We did say that there was an elephant in the room. <laughs> Josh, my yes. good friend. Yes? How does it feel to be back again with me on the greatest podcast ever recorded ever dot com ever? Do you have evidence to support that claim? Well, Josh, I'm not sure you're up to date with the statistics, but... Are you? <laughs> kind of i mean dude we're doing well man we're we've got like almost 300k subs at the time of recording this yep yep each episode's getting 100 to 250k to even some even have hit a million views but jelly jelly you need to stop right there uh-huh because what we haven't achieved yet is world domination oh my god and we need to figure out how we can achieve that with this podcast well First of all, wait, wait, we wait, need wait, your wait, help. Wait, wait, wait. We should probably talk about actually what we're talking about in this episode as well. Oh, okay. We'll get onto the world domination in a second. But Jelly, what are we talking about today? I was going to tell everybody that we need to, we need their help too. <laughs> Josh, you really put Did me I off record. Did I just up? I'm sorry, I was going to say, please subscribe to the show. Oh, right. <laughs> Josh, right. why did you cut me off? You don't want me to I tell thought, them? I to thought subscribe? you were gonna tell them about our secret plan already. Well, before we do, subscribe to the show, yeah. listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music. No, is it Apple Music? I I don't know, but mainly YouTube, because that's actually where we are. Where the big bucks are made as well, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean I think that's just where we're uh, best. Are there big bucks being made right now, Josh? <laughs> Hey, we told the viewers in our first episode we're going to be open about everything. We did get a brand deal and we had to shove it into one of the other episodes. That's true. Uh, oh, that means we had our first sponsor, man. Yeah, which was great. Yeah. And also was cool because we had some like some drip, some clothing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm proud of us, Josh, but we're not there yet. Like you said, we're still growing. We're still growing. So we are going to be talking about a lot of juicy things here today. Go on, Jelly. What are we talking about? Do you remember? No, I wanted to like let you do it. You've already forgotten what we're talking about. <laughs> Josh, okay. I'm just some here of the as things the we're going to be talking kid. about. Um, we're going to be taking the podcast on the road. Oh my god, on the road. Yeah, Wait, um, I thought it was on a flight. Well, technically on the flight. I'm just trying to give hints. No, but of... Josh, planes they don't go. Yeah, but on you roads. say on the road. See, you're completely derailing. Is it because this. I'm a foreigner that I don't understand? These... Why are you making it about you now? I don't understand what you mean okay. with taking it on the road. Podcast is, we're doing things. We're packing it up. Yeah, and we'll get into that later on. Um, we're also going to be discussing uh, me and Jelly's luxury lifestyle. Um, we've got some interesting developments there. <laughs> like Josh's t-shirt. And Jelly's horde of boats. Um, <laughs> what else are we going to talk about? Oh, we're going to be talking about a potential... Uh, episode in the future where we might have two people from our past on at the same time mm -hmm, potentially mm -hmm. maybe where's the developments on that oh what god are, there's definitely other things and then well. arguably the most important thing we're going to be doing today oh also we're going to talk about gaming as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but yeah <laughs> we've, we've got some interesting uh, games from the past <laughs> yeah 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 but things people might not know about the past but the most important thing we're going to be talking about today all right. I'm sure we've forgotten something else. Is feedback. We're going to give feedback. Oh, yeah. Josh, why did you forget? This was like the main thing. This is the main thing. <laughs> We're going to become therapists. Oh, my God. You said it. I wanted you to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, mainly because I was scared I was going to struggle pronouncing the word yeah. ther therapist. Yeah. So we decided that you guys have so many problems and our lives are so fine. We have not decided that they have problems. I mean... They've told us that they have problems and came right. to us for help. And which... we decided that we can solve those problems? I didn't decide anything. Hey, hey, hey. I, so basically, what I'm we did... I'm putting my hands up in the air. I'm saying I'm not involved. What we did is we opened up um, to receive some, I guess, kind of questions, uh, stories from you guys, the viewers. And you sent them in. And we've picked out a few for us to read out. And then we're going to let you guys know what we think you should be doing. And that is the fair, the 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 therapist. Yes. Got to be very careful how you say that because it wow. can be very something something completely different. So those are the topics for today. Yep. Now what are we going to be starting about? To start, Jelly, you mentioned about being the 
biggest, best podcast in the world. Yeah. But could we be better? Yeah. We I had, we, we had a, we uploaded an episode with Tiger, who is uh, someone that an ex member of our group kind of messed about. Well, tigers are actually animals that live in the jungle. No, 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 no. The YouTuber that we had on the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this guy, his name's Hassan, and he portrays himself by the name Tiger slash Liger. Yeah. He's not totally sure. No, um, he's figuring out. Maybe, but technically, maybe a Liger is half the tiger. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> well, actually, most people we seem to work with need Dude, therapy sessions. What you were going to say is that he, the way he blew up yes. was by buying ad slots yep. on another YouTuber's channel. Yes. Now, we need, we need to explain this to the viewers. So essentially, Hassan, all right, with his own hard-earned money, all right, gave it to Google Yep. And said to Google, here's a little clip that I want you to put on top of this video with the money I'm giving you. Yeah. And that's what Google did. Now, we want to know whether you guys think we should do that. Now, mm -hmm. at the beginning, we thought, hey, we could just run some naughty little ads on our own channels to try yeah. and get some more audience because that sounds pretty fun. Like I could like I, I actually am. I could film my trip here to the podcast studio, do a little vlog, you know, and promote Jenny, the channel just, doing that. That's boring, dude. Is it you boring? You know what we should do? Is it, isn't it? That's just boring. Oh, what we should do oh. is we should just create a, uh, we should create an advert and then we just play it on like Quibble Cops channel oh or Craner's God. channel. Wait. And in that advert, and these are people that used to be, you know, we used to work with. In that advert, we should just say, the video you're about to watch is really boring. But you know what isn't boring? The Two Thirds podcast. Are we? Are you allowed to say that? I don't know if you're allowed to say that's that. That's what in an Hassan ad. said. There's, there's. You know what? Did he break some terms of service to do to do these type of things? Because that's actually what I'm wondering if about. If you don't say it, it doesn't exist. Oh, the you terms don't. of service. Stop saying it. Oh. <laughs> Look, Jenny. If we okay, I, I like this. This stuff. is a tactic for us to achieve world domination, but. Okay, let me give you um, a scene, okay? Yeah. To camera three, okay? I want you to pretend that you're, a, you're an ad that's just about to run on the Craner channel. Okay. How would you stop the viewers from watching Craner and come and watch us? Okay. Ready? Ah, oh, hang on. So wait, it's I'm important to know, in. it's important to know that they can click away after five seconds. Yes. So I need to grab I need them to in the hooked. first five seconds. Ready? All right. Three, two, one, action. You are about to watch a very boring Roblox video, and that's not what you want to want to be spending your time doing. Cut, cut the part out where I mispronounced the word. Jenny, it was one take. Cut, okay. No, but the okay. editing needs to cut that. Okay, two. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Boring Roblox video. Don't watch. Instead, click this video. Here, I talk about what's not boring, and that's me, myself, and I. Click now. Make me money. Nice. Okay. What do you think? Uh, I think that's going to work. I mean... What if you were to put one on the Quibble Cop channel? Make on the Quibble Cop. Although he has to actually upload videos to, to do that. Oh, by the way, I should probably say, I'm not saying Craner's videos are boring. Mm, I think you did say that. Uh, did I say that? Yeah, you said that. Mm. Okay, but let's think I don't about, want it to be personal. Let's think outside of our bubble. If we wanted to promote this podcast even further with this dastardly Dude, tactic. What imagine, <laughs> imagine we buy an ad on the Mr. Beast channel. Yeah, I feel like those ads are going to be quite expensive. There's going to be... A, are they, though? I, I, yeah, I, yeah, maybe. maybe. Okay, so we're going to buy an ad on the Mr. Beast channel. So we're going to promote two-thirds on the Mr. Beast channel. Okay, okay. So here we are. Here's the scene. What would we say? Here's the scene. So Mr. Beast is... You're about to watch a video where Mr. Beast has paid millions of dollars to cure kids' blindness. And you've decided that you want to redirect the viewers away from that video to this content, Jelly. Yeah. What do you say? No, Three, no. two, one, action. <laughs> Watch the podcast instead of curing blind people. Nice, Jay. You nailed that. <laughs> no, I don't know what you to say. That. Josh, that's... We'll get that one up and running straight away. No, you know what? The, you know what? We shouldn't do it on the Mr. Beast channel because he's doing a good thing here, Josh. You <laughs> came up we, with the idea. I mean... Oh, no, no. I didn't come up with the with the putting the ad on the curing blind people video. Mm. We could put it on. We could put it on the video where he survives a hundred days in a house or a prison cell. Right. Okay. I think that'd be better. 
I well, we can agree to disagree on that. Josh, no. So Josh, I want you to do an ad. All right. Okay. I've been doing ads. Okay. You're gonna be running an ad on T series. I don't. I don't they're not gonna understand what I'm saying. What do you mean? That I don't think the most of the viewers are gonna understand English. Why is that? Because there's a primarily Indian audience, isn't it? Okay. Well, Josh. Um, give me something else, Jed. Give me give me something a bit juicier. Than a that. bit juicier than that. Yeah. Well, you know what? Run an run an ad on my channel. Um. Okay. Fine. We're gonna run an ad on Jelly's gaming channel. Okay. Can you cut me in? All right. Three, two, one. Ad starts. We all know the best part of the Jelly channel is the person that he records with, Slogo. Now, if I want to be honest, the best place you could go would like be Dolph. the. Would be the Slogo channel. Can you not ruin my flow? I've, I'm engaged. Oh. It would be the Slogo channel, but I might have something even better for you. The Two Thirds Podcast, where you get a little bit of jelly, but mostly me, your host, Slogo. No, I don't agree with this. You're not the host of the show. We're both hosts. Right. right. We talked about this. Right. We signed a contract. We're 50 50 hosts. Speaking of that, by the way, in the last episode that we did as a duo, we did say that there was an elephant in the room, right? <gasps> oh. And I think, uh, mm. well, I think later on this episode. It wasn't the first duo episode we did. No, I believe but it the was last the one. No, the last one. It wasn't the last the one. Last the last one was one the one with the Prime. Last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. There might have been something else going on. There might have been actually a third person in the room. Somewhere here. Yeah, but we'll get there. We'll get there. No. But uh, we definitely should talk about that. Yeah, today. we should. Anyway, let's... um. Let's have a bit of an update, Jelly, on yeah. on what's going on in the Jelly and Slogo world, huh? All right. Well, Josh, you told me an interesting story the other day, and I think it'd be something quite entertaining for the, <sighs> the viewers. The other day, it was yesterday. True. Well, um, as most of you know, all right, I own a ten million dollar boat, which is not actually worth ten million. Sorry, it was clickbait. It's worth a hundred grand, which is still a lot of money for a boat. But hey, it's a nice boat. Mm. Now. Um, summer's coming up, you know, summer's coming up, you know, my, my mind is spinning and I'm feeling like, Hmm, maybe I should look at another boat. Okay. Yeah. So you've got, you know, you, you've kind of, uh, I've already got a nice boat. You've had a relationship with this first boat for a little bit of time. Three but you're years. thinking maybe the grass is greener on the other side. Um, I, it's not like I want an upgrade. I don't want a more expensive boat, mm. but maybe I'll look at something slightly different. Jelly, can we get to the point a bit? So I went to a boat convention, which is basically which is the 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 lamest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh really? Someone walks into the room and goes, "Let me tell you about the <laughs> boat a convention." Room. The, Josh, the boats are on the water. No, but I'm saying you're you're talking to your friend or someone. And you're uh, like, uh, "Let me tell you about this boat convention I went to," and it's just like you just you you're gonna switch off immediately. Josh, you know what? I have to disagree here. I'll take you to the Monaco yacht show. It's amazing. You'll have dude. to take me tied up with a bag on my head. <laughs> oh, how many coughs are we gonna have, by the way, producer Ben? Sorry, I did mute my mic when I did it, but I'm I'm ill. You yeah, got but me I, working I'm when in I'm the ill. zone here, Jenny. Sorry. Look, you we've got. Are you complaining about working while you're ill? You still haven't paid me anything. Okay, yet. all right, let's go on with it, <laughs> Jenny. Jenny, can we cut to the chase? Yeah, I went to a boat convention. Yeah, right. Where at the end of it. Uh, we had to do a little Q and A, and there what would be a potential prize for the winner. Okay. Yeah. And what was the Q and A about? It was about the convention and, and the boats. boats that they were selling. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, apparently I won. I had all the questions correct. Which, by you, the so way, you showed me this on your phone. Yeah. You were like, "Look, I won," and you, I he won. showed me a list of of winners on his phone. Yeah, you I was were first, in first place. place. I I guess I have a huge brain and I'm very smart. Can you just give me an example of some of the questions that you were asked though? Do boats float? No, you weren't asked that. No, 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 no. It was like, it was more specific about like the model and the model gear it was produced. And so really nerdy stuff. Yeah, is there anything wrong with that? So you showed me that you won first, but what did you win, by the way? So apparently I won a watch. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and it potentially a cool watch. I potentially think. a not, cool not, watch. Not, not like, a, uh, like a luxury watch, but like yeah. a... Like, I don't know, a standard watch, right? Yeah. And that you were pretty happy about that. Yeah, I want to watch. You're proud of yourself. Dude, I, I'm living the luxury life, man. I, but, I'm, winning but, boat sh I'm winning boat show Q&As. But what did I say to you, Jelly? I sort of said that maybe there's a chance that they kind of 
gave it to you because you're jelly? I, I didn't tell him. No, but I said that, didn't I? I said that we were having dinner. No, I no, said, no. You're discrediting my my knowledge. And uh, I'm the one who answered all the questions. But they knew, quickly. you know, they knew who Jelly was. And uh, anyway, so you woke up this morning, though. And yeah. what happened? Um, they're very kindly offering me a boat. Well, step of one was... <laughs> Step one was they basically said that you basically you want it because dude I am the most grateful guy ever you man I'll won, take this they boat they purposely I'll their brand. made him win this prize because they knew it was jelly and they sent him an email asking to do a collab <sighs> I, I, which at the beginning was was not was not great but there is a there is a I haven't silver s- lining right there is a silver lining you know and, and it, whether i question i i think i assume i answered all the questions correctly that's uh, that would be, i i would i have a feeling you didn't <laughs> <laughs> i think they genuinely made you win because because they're super nerdy questions yeah. you think i answered them wrong but when so when they emailed you and you said they said something along the lines of like uh, congratulations for winning the watch also it would be great to collab it kind of looked like it. it. I just don't understand how that, like how how that happened. Yeah, but I didn't go there as a YouTuber. I didn't even sign up for the event. Yeah, I just walked in. But anyway, what happened was they then e- you emailed them back, and then they were like a bit more. Uh, I I'm down to collab. But because they actually then said we can offer you a uh, use of a boat. Yeah, I mean, Josh, I might be able to sell my ten million dollar boat soon. Damn, guys. I might be able, dude, (laughs) I might be able to sell my boat. And then you've got nothing to complain about anymore. (laughs) Because you got But I'll just be repping their brand. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Jelly will turn up in the next episode with just a boat brand on him. (laughs) You finally found out the one thing, like you've, by by fake winning a competition i didn't fake win i still think i am a genuine winner accidentally found the perfect collaboration between Dude. jelly and the hey, you love you know as long as it floats i'll take it yeah but well <laughs> congratulations jelly and, thank you uh, man thank i still you. doubt that you actually want it oh so right. i have my own sort of luxury story. yeah josh listen you told me this right before so we I, started this recording and yeah yeah so i walked in basically to the office today i want to warn the viewers though and uh a lot of people were like, oh, nice T-shirt. And I, I was like, oh, thanks. I didn't say anything, but I got a new T-shirt, right? It's the one you're wearing right now. It's the now. one I'm wearing right now. And, and uh, I, you know, I just, just kind of got on with it. And kind of like maybe three or four people said nice T-shirt. Cut to the chase. Slow go. Josh, how expensive is this Basically, plain I, T-shirt I that you're buy, wearing? I, I like one type of T-shirt. So I buy pretty much the same T-shirt. But... I became aware of like, I'm not going to say the brand, but I became aware of like a t-shirt company, uh, like a really fancy company that sells t-shirts for excessive amounts of money. Like, but it's just part of their brand. Like they sell tons of other stuff, for a stupid amount of money. And I saw that they've got t-shirts for like a minimum of like eight, nine hundred dollars for a single Excuse t-shirt. Excuse me? Eight dollars? Nine dollars? Eight or nine hundred dollars. For a Nine hundred dollars for so a single I, and I was t-shirt. like, that was insane. I would never pay that. But I am also very obsessed with making sure I've got the, like, the best t-shirt that in that I could have, comfort wise. Uh-huh. Then I noticed that they had a t-shirt for the low, low price of four hundred dollars. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I don't think I can live my life not knowing what a four hundred dollar t-shirt feels like. And hey, you can always return it. So I bought it, and that t-shirt is this t-shirt. This is a $400 t-shirt, which is more money than anyone should really spend on their entire wardrobe, realistically. But I bought it as a single t-shirt. And I'll be honest, it's a pretty darn comfortable t-shirt. And everyone has said nice things about it. Where in any other t-shirt I've worn, no one's ever said a nice thing. Well, I think it looks like shit. You did not say that. (laughs) Jelly said it was a nice t-shirt. No, but Josh, it's a nice t-shirt, but it's not a $400 t-shirt. Well... What what makes it? How do you? How would you get a four hundred dollar t shirt then? You give me so much shit, but jelly for buying cars. But jelly, it's half for buying boats. No, you need to think right? about it. That but, go up mm, in value, jelly. It's half the price of a nine hundred dollar t shirt. Josh, your t shirt is made from a hundred percent cotton. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You can buy hundred percent cotton for like t shirts for five bucks. 
Uh, you can't put a price on. I don't really know what I'm going to say. I don't. Yeah, it's it's a really expensive T-shirt, yeah. and I won't buy another one. And but now I know. Now I know what it's like. So there's one thing though. You haven't washed it yet, so you no. don't know how durable it actually is. It's comfy now, and it looks good now. Yeah. But well, maybe maybe you know a four hundred dollar T shirt should outlive you. Yeah. The question is, will this T shirt outlive you? Well, I guess we'll find out on that one, Jerry. Yeah, I, I guess we will. Okay. You guys never compliment me on my clothes. Is it because they're cheap? No, it's because nobody can see you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and and next time, maybe just don't comment on that at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Anyway, Ben, Jenny. It's all right. That's an update on our uh, on our luxury lives, dude. Uh, you know, some people think that us YouTubers, especially us gaming YouTubers, live the luxury lives. But do we? <laughs> do that, that is that is a terrible question to ask after just saying, like, "Oh yeah, I got a free boat," and "Oh yeah, I got four hundred dollar yeah, yeah, right. T-shirt." Yeah, yeah, we live luxury lives. No, we don't. But. <laughs> No, 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 no. Everything, Compared. everything from our perspective is quite normal, and that's the weird part, right? Yeah. Like from from our perspective, this is just our life. It just sounds like. And you know what the most messed up part is? There are there are so many people that I that I know of that have extreme luxury lives. Yeah. And nothing compared to me. But. But when it, when people look at me, they might think I have a luxury. If life. I if there was a Gucci logo on this though, you probably would just think, yeah, that's, that's fine. No, I think you would look cheap, mate. No, no, no. Well, yeah, I, I, it looks cheap, but I. This is probably if you had a Gucci logo on this, people yeah. would think it, which is not any of those brands. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. Then suddenly, it's, and it would probably be a worse T-shirt. It's funny that, isn't it? Well, that's actually a, a question though. How do you know? I don't what. Have you ever bought a Gucci T-shirt? Yeah, I mean, I've seen them. I've seen them. I don't have one myself. Right. But Most I, of them I that you've seen are fake. Maybe. That's a good point. And actually, it's a funny point, actually, because uh, we're going to VidCon. Um, and it's a lot of things that YouTubers will do is buy fake stuff like Gucci and stuff. Like I, I've been to quite a few VidCons. We've been to E3s. Yeah. Like a lot of events over the years. And everyone's wearing like the new fancy pair of shoes. But most people will just have the fake versions of things, yeah. which is actually, actually it's fine. So talking about VidCon then, hmm. should we kind of explain to the viewers what VidCon is? It's a convention yeah. where fans can meet YouTubers. This is dipping our toes into like the, the gaming st side of our lives. Kind of, but... yeah, yeah. But we're going to be at VidCon this year. VidCon Anaheim, yes. that is. And surprise, surprise, rumble, rumble. Is this episode going out before VidCon? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the surprise? Sorry. We're bringing the podcast. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. We, so we're going to be going on the road. <coughs> Sorry. <sighs> <laughs> Maybe we we're, should give him a day off, mate. No. We're going on the road. We're taking the podcast in the skies, on the road, on a boat, wherever it needs to go, to shoot in VidCon. And we're going to be shooting with some guests. The podcast. Yeah. Jelly. What? I, I just want to make sure. Are you saying that... Are you making a joke about shooting things in, in America? I am not. I am just making sure that this cannot be taken out of context. All right, Jelly. I see. People are going to use little fragments and little clips, Josh. Okay. Look, we're going to VidCon. We're not shooting anything other than the podcast. Is that enough? Yes. Okay. And yeah, so we're going to have some interesting guests there. Which is going to be great. It's yeah. going to be an interesting experience for us because we have no idea how we're going to be bringing this to uh, a different country. Yeah. Um, and it could all fail and burn up and be Yeah, for terrible. example, right? We've got the green mic here with the little green thing. we got the stand. we got the sofas. We've got the cameras. We need to bring everything, Josh. Yeah, yeah. We're not uh, bringing the sofas. You can't take any of this gear. How the hell are you going to get over there? What do you mean? You, this is big gear. You're the producer, mate. You're yeah, bringing I'm it. I'm not going. Is, yeah, you are. yeah, you're going. When is it? In a couple uh, of weeks. June, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll figure it out. But yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, but it's, well, not, no, 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 it's you, not that heavy. No, 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 no. We, it's not that much. No, he can worry about it. We don't need to worry about it. Yeah, yeah don't. But worry yeah, about so it. if there's any, if there's any uh, guests that any of the viewers want us to see, maybe yes. spam those people. Spam them. No, don't spam them. Is that is it legal to say spam someone? Yeah. I, I think it's spam legal. them. Yeah, let them know so that we can get those guests on. And yeah, I think it'd be good. 
Cool. I already have some ideas who I want on. And, uh, well, should I say the names? No, 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 no. no. we're not going to drop names. if we don't have them on, then it's yeah, embarrassing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true, Mr. Beast. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. I guess we'll find out. I guess we will. While we're running ads on this Oops. channel. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think anybody will come on who we're running ads on, Josh. Yeah, well. Speaking of guests, by the way, I think oh. uh, just before we get into the therapy, right, mm. I think it would be interesting to have an update. Um, obviously, with this podcast, we, we've got a you know, growing fan base, viewership, whatever you want to say, that's a bit different to our gaming stuff. But obviously a core element of me and Jelly is our, well, what we do on the on the side with the gaming and our past with our group. I feel like the gaming thing is not really a side project. No, this is probably the side project. <laughs> but <laughs> I still think it would be interesting to update the viewers because obviously we had a um, super important Quibble Cop episode, super important Craner episode. Yeah. These are two people that used to be a core member of our, of our group. Good lads. Um, and they're the reasons kind of behind the naming of this podcast. And although it's become something on its own with a guest, Don't that's where the, that's the history. Mm -hmm. Now we came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. Actually, did I, or did you, I, I think maybe I might've said it or something. Yeah. We, we were recording, right? And I said to Jelly, I said, what if, what if we had Quibble Cop and Craner on in the same episode? And I kind of said, ah, that'd be silly. I immediately said, that that would be impossible and there's no way that Craner would do it. Now, I sort of said that I think it's something that the viewers would really enjoy. And I sort of was saying, I hope that Craner and Quobocop would kind of see that and kind of put aside any of their yeah. personal things to realize that that would be something that the viewers would really probably get good fun from. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? So I I messaged Quobocop. Yep. Um, who, to be fair, said, let's do it, pretty much. No, no questions asked. No he questions was like, asked. How did I'm it, coming how did he, say, he didn't say it like that, though, did he? What? What did he say? Let's do oh, it! Yeah, he didn't say that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Anything I worse. Just cringe. That made my throat worse. Yeah. So. I messaged Craner. Yeah. But on the Quebecot one as well, that's, uh, that's even after the fact that we've had the Tiger episode go up, which was definitely not a very positive yeah. display of Quibble Cop, mm -hmm. um, but he's still down. So respect where respect is due. Dude, Quibble Cop will always live up to it. I think the one thing I'll say with Quibble Cop, now you might have your own opinions on the way he makes his content, but, and you know, he's got his own personal things to, to deal with. But, but the thing is with Quibble Cop is at the end of the day, he's, he's always down to do something crazy. Yeah um for the viewers and for the content which you've got to respect he's I, good at I putting agree. his person uh, personal thoughts and feelings to the side yep. for the viewers now you messaged craner yes about it how did that go i messaged craner and i asked craner do you want to come back on the podcast but this time we have quibble cup here as well mm -hmm. and the immediate reaction was no i don't want to do it i don't want to do it because he feels like um, we might have offended him. Might have. Mm. Mm. So I think this, and this is to do with um, partially because in our follow-up episode, ah. we kind of said that we didn't feel like he was sort of ready for getting Coming back. back. Yeah. And we, you know, we never, we said that we didn't, we didn't, it wasn't in our sort of uh, vision moving forwards anyway. We weren't closing the door, but we weren't sort of saying that the door was open. And at the same time, I also said that I still wasn't really, didn't really enjoy talking to him too much. I still think he's got some own things to be working out. Yeah. And I think that upset him a lot. I don't think he'd like to hear that. No. Which in my mind just proved that he's still got some learn, you know, work to do. Yeah. But I did deep, there was a part of me that thought that Craner would still, when you messaged him, would still see the value in having all four of us here for the viewers. Yeah, I mean, first of all, he's never met Quibble Cop. No. But he's always been compared to Quibble Cop. Yeah. So it yeah. would be very interesting for him to meet him. Yeah. But he doesn't want to do it in the public eye. Yeah. Which, which is, I, I see, I have an interesting feeling about that because I feel like so much of our lives have been shared with the viewers that it's like, I think it's a bit selfish to yeah. not 
um like i i get like wanting to you know to do to not everything wanting to be in public i understand that but something like that i feel like you'd almost we almost owe it to the viewers because the viewers have got us to where we are just a, an hour long shoot like with the four of us on a sofa like it's not really a big ask is it and the viewers would really love that yeah i mean uh, i agree i think it's a shame like we wouldn't like like i don't like i i i respect trainer too i respect call cop i respect trainer and i i think i'd love to have him on uh and i feel i feel like it's a good thing we're giving them the opportunity to come on uh it's not like we're going to talk about anything juicy either i think it would actually be really fun right like we'd yeah. actually like kind of be um because it, it will be a completely new dynamic that we haven't even seen before yet. But so it's, I, I think it's a bit of a shame that we're never potentially going to experience that. Where? Well, because of Krona. Yeah. I, I don't think we should dance around it. That I actually was quite upset that he said no. I, like, I think he has the right to say no. Oh, he absolutely has the right to say um, no. But he does, I don't think he has the right to say no. But then at the same time, think that he can that he is you know all happy go like wants to be chatting and wants to be working towards doing stuff again like that doesn't no. feel that doesn't sit right with me so you think he wants like the perfect i think he wants like the perfect thing for him but not really thinking about sort of uh, the viewers and so and what you're saying else. is he is perfectly fine to record gaming videos with us again but he doesn't want to come on the podcast and i think that's because that's like the easy the easy route because the, the podcast is not making him any money yeah well see the thing is it's like yeah because he probably sees it as he feels left out so he doesn't want to be involved in podcasts whereas but that's not really what this is about like no we never made this to make tons of money this was to, <laughs> to give people an insight if where we they, did where's the money yeah. <laughs> but we, we made this podcast to give people a deeper insight into what goes on and yeah. the things that the viewers should have been knowing about the whole time yeah. and i think that's what frustrates me it's like Sometimes you've just got to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, put yourself out there a bit for the benefit of the benefit of not only yourself, but the viewers and the people that, you know, looked out for you. Yeah, I mean, that's realistically why we started this podcast. It's because we we want we wanted to connect more with our audience. So we felt like the gaming stuff just wasn't doing that yeah. for us anymore. Um, and we've been doing this whole YouTube thing for such a long time. <coughs> That there, excuse me, that there are, or excuse you, I should say. <laughs> and we've been doing this YouTube thing for such a long time that there's also people who just aren't interested in our gaming stuff anymore. So this podcast works perfect. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go out and say it, Jelly. Like, Craner, if you're listening, I think you should come onto the podcast with Cobblecop. I think it would be good for you. I think it'd be good for us. And I think it'd be good for the viewers. I also think the viewers should be pushing Craner to do it. And I think that he's holding back a beautiful thing. And I think he's being quite selfish. And I think it would be really, really big of him and really noble and really cool if he could put himself outside of that comfort zone okay. and do it. Well, you heard it there, Craner. I'm sure he'll hear that message. Um, I think he will. I was tearing up there, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, that was a beautiful moment. Talking about tears. <laughs> i think it's time to have a uh, a little bit of a insight into our viewers minds yeah it's time for therapy so um i i haven't seen these 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 ther whoa, whoa, whoa. Th Hang therapy on, questions we aren't, yet we aren't quite ready actually we aren't no let me grab oh you have grab all kinds of things prepared oh no let me grab this what's that brand Bl block it not sponsored. Okay, so first of all, we've got... All right, so what's happening right now is Josh just grabbed the box from behind his seat. Realistically, these should be bow ties, but uh, uh, he, they're ties. You bought yeah. ties? Yeah, yeah, because I, I wanted to make sure that we got into the room. You want me to tie a knot? They're, Jelly, they're literally clip-ons. Oh. So put on your tie. I mean, mine... Wait, wait why do I have the red one? You yeah. should have the red one, yeah. mate. I just you couldn't find a green one for me. No. So you guys ordered some ties online for this therapy session. And they should have been bow ties. Do, do, thera ther do therapist. There you go. There you go. I knew I was going to mispronounce it. <coughs> do therapists um, often uh, wear ties? Cause no, but I, I, like I said, probably should have been bow ties now I think about it. Um, Why? That would be more of like a, no. like a casual event. 
Casual, I mean. No, 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 because it's like the like a nerdy. Because I've also got these, Jelly. I've got some glasses as well. Which ones do you want? Do you want the... Uh, I want, want the cool ones. Oh, the ones with the black top, please. Why do all therapists wear a tie and a pair of glasses? Josh. Do we, do we, I feel Please like I tell just me look these like, don't have any strength in them because that, that would actually hurt. I feel like I just look like Harry Potter now. <laughs> you do, mate. Could you give me a little, could you give me a little, um, uh, agro cardabra. Agro? Yeah. Agro culture. Uh, yeah. And so, okay. So here we have our clipboards jelly. So these represent our. So we're the therapists. Yeah, right. Did, did nobody tell you the plan? Here, here you go. Here's your uh, question. Could you throw it, please? Wait. Well, okay, Josh, I think you should start first. Um, actually, Jelly, I want you to start. First. Okay. Okay, so, well, um, yeah. Welcome to the... Th oh, no. Welcome to the two-thirds therapy couch. Are you sure <clears throat> or unsure if it's your fault? Do you know if you are the arsehole? Is it arsehole? Arsehole, yeah, I guess. Why is there an R? Do you just... Just, just do, do you know if you are the asshole or if it's someone else? Send in your stories, problems, and issues for Josh and Jelly to read out on the podcast and potentially help you out. And so that's what we asked the viewers. That's now, right. We basically asked them two questions. We said, what is your story and what advice are you seeking? Josh, this is going to be problematic, mate. Yeah, and I'll be <laughs> honest, we had some very extreme uh, we should probably be um, very serious here. We did have an interesting th breadth of issues. Now, yes. some of those um, you may want to talk to a proper professional about. And me and Jelly are extremely underqualified to be dealing with those things. Agreed. Thank you for, for, for telling us that those things. But we will be moving on from those ones. Yeah. So these are going to be a little softer. These are the things that we think we have the capacity to handle. Yes. And I'll start by reading out the first story. So this is not from me. Okay. This is from another person. Yeah. And we don't... Oh, wait. You have to give them a name. Okay. This is Jack. Me and my girlfriend just found out that we share the same great-grandparents. <laughs> just don't laugh. This is a therapy session. If you laugh Sorry. at a therapy session. Right, right. We really love each other and want to continue being together. But I know my parents would be against it and hers probably as well. Are they the same people? <laughs> what advice are you seeking? Please. Should we stay together? So let's have a think about what the problem we're presented with here first, Jelly. So we've the problem is incest. <laughs> How bad is the same great pet grandparents? What's the lineage lineage? So there? we've got grandparents, and then we've got great great grandparents. So it's three generations. So that's quite far back. It's not. Yeah, but you could be third cousins with the same like. I think you probably have a DNA match between y one and five percent. Um, which arguably has no idea what he's he talking this bro. <laughs> just, just just listen. You, you do need to talk to the viewer, by the way, Jack. Listen to me, Jack. If you're under the age of 25, there's still plenty of time. Go get yourself a new girlfriend and save your future children from any potential DNA misformities. <laughs> it's not funny. Is that so? That's the advice we're giving. So just don't. <laughs> Don't, don't pipe. I mean, you know what? Don't they could pipe your family member, I guess. <laughs> they could continue being together, but maybe don't have kids. Right. Is what? that your advice? <laughs> Josh, I am so sorry. All right. Well, Josh, I want you. Yeah, this is a therapy session with two therapists. Okay, let's think about this a bit more then. Just while we're on this point, okay? How does that person make you feel, Jack? Do they make you feel happy? Okay. Do they make you feel sad? Okay. Either way, it's you're probably related to them. So just move on. All right. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> There's plenty more people available. Like there are billions of people on this planet. Okay. You can go for someone that you don't share a great grandparent with. It's not that difficult. If you think you like them, it's not that deep. Move on. Okay. 
That one was quite harsh. I thought I was I, I was really trying my best to like stay it's time clean. for me to talk about my person. Uh, my person is Antonio. Antonio. We're making these names up, by the way. Antonio, the story of Antonio. Jake, what are you doing? See you later, Jack. Okay. Antonio. I have always been doing good in college with the work I'm supposed to do and never asked for help from my peers. My classmates assume that I am extremely smart and whenever I am in a group project with them, they let me do all the work and rely on me. I never confronted them nor complained about it, but I end up being emotionally drained. What advice are you seeking, Antonio? How do I confront them in a way that I won't sound like I'm the asshole? Thank you very much. So basically, Antonio is in school. He's doing a lot of work and... Um, well, they just end up relying on him and he's never complained about it. How does he deal with that, Jelly? It's a bit unfair for Jelly because Jelly didn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, this is great because we can get perspective on this. Because when you were in school, you would have been the one that was relying on the smart kid. So as one of those kids... <laughs> Josh, there were no smart kids in my school, man. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> Now, how, so how does that, how does Antonio basically talk to, um, Antonio, what I want friends. you to do is stand up for yourself, stand up for your own feelings and show the world that you are in control and not all those other peers relying on you. You are the one who can make this world. You are the one who can show dominance. Don't let the others overtake you. Okay. I've got some work, uh, some, some advice for you to do, um, Antonio. So rather than confronting them and telling them that they need to stop cheating off of you effectively, what I would do is I would create some work, some homework that is purposely incredibly poor and bad. And then what I would do is I'd feed that information to your classmates so that they continue to fail. But what I would do though, is make sure not to start too low. So don't just give them like fail level grades, okay? What you want to do is you want to assist them with their work, but like a B, right? Start off with like a B, B pretty grade. Good. B grade. Yeah, start there. But then what you want to do is slowly then feed them lower and lower quality work so that it looks like that their, their capacity, their performance is slowly dropping off of an edge. And then as they get further and further down, hopefully the teacher will then realize, ah, these students have a history of poor performance. And then the teacher will remove them from the class and put them in the less intelligent person class right wow that was way more in depth than i could have brought it yeah that was pretty good josh i you know what antonio i think you should seek and then put that, rat poison in their food except for that but seek i, I would I, I would advise that as well i take back whatever i said about world dominance and being the alpha male all um, right jelly next next the next question. one that i've got is really interesting so this person is named johnny and johnny has a really nice story. I live in Iraq. And Johnny is seeking some advice. And that advice is getting out of this rock. Have you seen what the company that makes these Josh, clipboards? You... Oh. No, you, I... Did you read the name? No, I haven't. What was the brand name, Jelly? Johnny and Co. No, what was the brand name? Raps Echo. <laughs> Raps Echo? Yeah. All That's right. Interesting. So let's Sorry, talk about was, Johnny here. Yeah, what was Johnny's story again? I think he lives Johnny... In a, he lives is, in a rock. Johnny lives in a rock, and Johnny is trying to get out of this rock. And I think... Is that like a metaphor? Yes. So actually, there's someone sitting next to Johnny while he was typing out this message. That's what I believe. And this person is controlling him. And Johnny actually lives in a basement. Yeah, that's what he's trying to say. Johnny's stuck in a basement, and he's, he's scared... And he's afraid, and he's underfed. He hasn't seen the sun for days. He requires vitamin D, and he's trying to get out of the basement. So how does Johnny get out of the basement? Johnny? Without, so we need to be very careful with our messaging here because Johnny's life might be at stake. <laughs> it's not funny. Johnny's life might be at stake. Okay. So we need to make sure that however we message this, that... The, the the person who's in control of Johnny doesn't understand our message. 
How is Johnny watching this? He's listening. Do you not think if Johnny has the ability to send in a question that he'd also have the ability to like call the police? Johnny doesn't have a phone. So how is Jelly sent in, uh, Johnny sent in the question? PC. Personal computer. Okay. Well, if Johnny hasn't got enough... Listen, don't if, ask these stupid if questions. If Johnny hasn't got the brain cells to contact someone to help him get out of the basement, but he can send us a therapy question on this dumb podcast, then maybe Johnny should stay in the basement. Are you the one who's, who's keeping him there, mate? I'm not going to lie. Basements are real convenient for keeping people in one place. <laughs> Joshua Fritzel. One way in, one way out. That's what I said to your mum last night. Oh, wait, I haven't asked this one yet. Johnny's mum or? Yeah. Um, okay. Now on for my next submission. Okay. What was, was that you? Just yeah, I was just okay, taking, so... in, taking in whatever you were saying. My next person is called Antoine. <laughs> They're the names. Why are your names so I Spanish? A, and my names are so I, English. Can you be quiet? This is Antonio and Jelly, Antoine. Jelly, this is a therapy session. You need to take this seriously. I have a friend for almost seven years now. We have been good, very good friends till now. She left for vacation for a couple of months. And she switched classes too. She hangs out with other people. And I do too. Because otherwise, she ignores me. The only way we talk is after school, walking home together. How do I get closer to her again? Now, I'll be honest. She left for vacation for a couple of months. Do, do people go on vacations for months, Jelly? Rich people. I'm not going to lie. This sounds like Antoine's a stalker. <gasps> so not so. this person, this, this, this girl, she had to leave on vacation for months. She had to switch classes and hang out with any other people because, and, and she had to ignore him. And the only way that he could talk to her is walking home from school, which I assume he then followed her. Oh my God, Antoine's a creep. So Antoine, effectively here, maybe you need to have a think, buddy, because what you think is a good friend for almost seven years now is actually a restraining order waiting to happen. You need to leave her alone. <laughs> He's gonna what cry. What do you think, Jelly? <laughs> <laughs> the suspense, mate. What do you think, Jelly? Well, I think Antoine, you're not to one. <laughs> <laughs> you're not to one for her. <laughs> yeah, get it? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it was better if you just didn't explain the joke. But. If you want advice on how to get closer to her, then obviously you've attempted to get closer to her walking home. Other ways that you can get closer to her is make sure to uh, time going to the shops at the same time that mm. she goes. You could probably, um, if you drive, uh, I would maybe park outside of her house and then use a camera and then you could keep track of the times that she leaves and departs. And then that would help you know when to time doing things at the same time as her. Oh my God, you shouldn't be given this. Also, advice. potentially, if you're really quiet, you can check if the, she has a home security system. If she doesn't, then you should be able to maybe open a window and maybe sleep next Does to her. Does it say that she went on holiday to... It's just that to she I... left for vacation. <laughs> if, if, uh, if she continues to go on long-term vacations, you might be able to find out where she's going and then book the same trip and the same flight. If you could then sit, sit next to her on the plane, that would be a great opportunity to get closer to her. So there's two ends of the spectrum on like our advice. Yeah, there. really good advice, Josh. Yeah, good luck, Antoine. Yeah, good luck, Antoine. All right, Jelly, next, next it's advice. It's time for Jason. Now, Jason has a story. A few years ago, my cat pissed me off. Mm -hmm. He scratched me and I was bleeding. And he went on and hid under the reclining couch we had in the living room. I got mad, and I started to press the recline buttons <laughs> to get him to come out. But it went very wrong. We took him to the doctor and had to get his tail half amputated since it was broken. <coughs> now, Jason's seeking some advice because of this story. He wants to know if it was his fault but the cat is alive and healthy, but he does st still feel guilty about it. 
<laughs> he wants to know if it's his fault. So the cat's tail, he was under the sofa and he re purposely reclined yeah. the sofa to, to... So I, Jason, I'm going to be honest with you. That cat should have never grown that tail. What's he talking about? That's the issue. The tail, right? If the tail wasn't there. So it's the cat's fault. It's the cat's fault. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> but if we dig in deeper on this. God, here we go. Don't dig deeper into the chair. The cat's <laughs> tail, couldn't, if it didn't grow, it wouldn't have got caught. Yeah. I accept that. If they had never bought the cat, the cat wouldn't have been under the sofa. Oh. but So it's his parents' fault. Well, they also bought the sofa. They also conceived the child. That's true. Oh! Now, if... Wait, what's his name? Jason. If Jason was never born, this would never have happened. Jason, it is your fault. No! No! No, we need to help wait, these no, people. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah, what was yeah. the advice he was seeking? The advice is he feels guilty, so he wants to know if he's actually guilty. I'll be honest. I don't think the cat knows that you did it. Yeah. The cat is fine. The cat, the cat doesn't is care. healthy. And you know what? The cat is better off without a little piece on its Ooh. tail. So let me uh, actually- Actually, it's probably not. Are you familiar, uh, Jason, with something called gaslighting? What we, because this would be a good like lesson on gaslighting. So what you could do is you could tell the cat that the chair did it. <laughs> that was it. That's all I'm going to say, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jason, you're not guilty. Don't worry about it. The cat is fine. It might have a little bit of coordination issues when it starts to land or jump, but it's a cat. Would that be uh, one loss of a cat life? Arguably, yes. Yeah, it probably has seven lives remaining. Don't worry about it, Jason. Plenty more to go. J. All right, on to the next very stable person. Um, Anthony, Josh, 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 Josh. Josh, these are people who are seeking help. We call them just regular people. Well, this person has a serious problem. D yeah. Which still makes him just a normal Someone person. Someone said I was the same height as What's Jelly. What's his name? Uh, we will call this person um, Shrimp. Not a Spanish name this time? No. And it's, it's, just, it's just a random name. There's no, there's no connection to the story. Someone said I was the same height as Jelly. Wow. It's called Cat. Wait, what are the... Can you give me a name of like one of the seven dwarfs? Happy. This person's called Happy. Someone said I was the same height as Jelly. Now I feel offended. How to recover? <laughs> now, Jelly, I thought maybe you could give us an insight into this one because they're the same height as you and they were offended by that. What do you think that you would tell them to make them feel better? Listen to me. Happy. Happy. If you're unsure about your height, measure was, measure yourself. I was I was in the moment. Sorry. If you're unsure about your height, grow some more. Interesting. If Interesting. not physically, do it mentally. Hmm. Did that? Will that change the fact? Uh, what I would say is that it's probably highly unlikely that you are the same height as Jelly because that would be very short. I'm not that short. Mr. Producer, yeah. just who's been, taller, me or you? Yeah, have we, I'm not on have we found anyone? In, have we had a single guest in this podcast that's shorter than you so far? Fifty Paldies. Wow. Mm, yeah, but he they, he broke his legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's really time. Actually, I've seen a couple of uh, TikToks recently of people that have been getting leg extension. Um, surgery. Oh, would you advise that to? I was going to forward viewer? that to you, actually. Really? What do you think? Why do you? Why do you think I need a leg extension? Because you're really short. Anyway, basically, if you are Jelly's height, then there's nothing we can do. <laughs> next question. <sighs> oh yeah, yeah. Next. Oh. <laughs> well, still the old one. <laughs> right. Uh, we need a name. Um, oh, <coughs> oh. Oh, I'm not sure I want to say this guy's name. The story goes... No real names, Jelly. I almost killed my mother. <laughs> what is wrong with yours? Why did you pick these? I didn't pick these. I got given these. Yeah, right. Okay, go on. Me and my brother. 
We're playing in the kitchen with n- not oh knives. Yeah. I lost a dare to him and had to throw the knife. I threw it in the kitchen at the same time that my mom was walking in. And then the knife hurt my mom. But she's okay now. (laughs) She's got half a tail. Well, as long as she's okay now, then that's fine. What advice are you seeking? This person doesn't know. Okay. What advice he's seeking? So, okay, so so he was having a game, and then because he lost the game, he had to throw the knife. It was a dare. You know, I I, I do dares all the time. Jenny, can you stop messing with the microphone, please? Okay. Or I will throw a knife at you. Oh. So the dare, the 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 penalty on the dare was to throw a knife. Yes. Now, are we just going to assume that that's okay to throw knives or not? No. Unless you're playing the knife throwing game, okay. So that let's just assume that they're playing the knife throwing game. Is it? I do. We just have to be honest here and just acknowledge the fact that it's probably his mum's fault. Yeah, she shouldn't have walked in. Right. Now, I think what would be helpful is in future when playing the knife throwing game, is to throw knives in areas where your mum is unlikely to be. Are you saying mothers belong in the kitchen? No. Tosh. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying to avoid throwing knives in areas where the mother is likely to be. Okay. Now that might be the kitchen. It might be the laundry room. Doesn't matter where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows where it is? So areas that a mother is unlikely to be. The workplace. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I love my mom. The garage. My mom works. My mom has a job. The, the, yeah. She's a chef. So yeah, I would encourage, I would encourage them in the future to throw knives in locations that aren't the mother is unlikely to be. Yeah. Maybe at school. Work maybe bench, somewhere else. Garage. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Outside. Just throw knives in different places. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Don't throw knives at all. Like, but your mum's not going to be at school, so throw a knife at school. But what if you hit another person or your dad? But the problem was the mum. Jelly, we need to stay. See, this is the thing. Effective therapy stays on topic. Okay, he doesn't want to hurt his mum. Okay, now look, might hurt a student, might hurt a peer or a friend, but that's not the question. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they weren't really no, sure what kind of advice they were seeking, I guess. Right. Yeah. And the mum's fine. Just a huge scar across her face, but that's about it. Yeah, and an amputation of her tail. All right, moms don't have tails. So I've got quite a long story here, Jelly. Um, This is uh, Ant. Ant is doing... Ant, Josh says, no, no, no. (coughs) Let's go with a real name. All right, we can't can't just pick a random insect as a name. Tony. Maybe... Tony is doing his master's at quite a prestigious university in London, but he won't say which one. Is it Harvard? But it's host to the leading crime science institute in the world. My problem is that all year a person, who I thought was my friend, has been cheating off of people all year and constantly trying to get lots of help. I didn't know this at the time. This person straight up asked to see my work so they could copy it and tried to copy mine and another person's dissertation ideas. I did end up helping her with the assignment by giving her general advice, but no more than that. When we got our results back, mine was mid and theirs were quite high. Their results are mediocre across the board other than this assignment. What advice are you seeking? I'm really quite upset by how better, much better they did in their assignment. And I wonder if they did cheat on it. Am I justified in being jealous? And I reported it. And if I reported it, would I be an asshole? Thanks in advance, guys. Also, Josh, you are the funny one. Jelly, I might be one of your mods, but you suck. It doesn't actually say that. That last part probably doesn't actually say that. Yeah, it does. Like this one, my next one actually says that Jelly's the weirdest person no, in no, the entire does, world. No, no, it does. It does. It says that. All right. Um, obviously, this is a, this is a slightly more... Um, intellectual question so I guess I'll take the lead on this one yeah I have no idea what you're talking about but I already forgot it obviously you've got an issue with someone at school who potentially is copying work so uh, some advice step one I would uh, do some investigations and see if this person is on medication oh if they're on medication you should be able to purchase some sort of like sugar pill alternative 
And then what I would do is at some point in time, sneak into their bag or into their bathroom or something, find those pills and remove them from the bottle and then replace the pills with a, basically like a sugar pill, like a dud, like a, uh, like a placebo. What if they have diabetes? But, well, then it would have to be, that's a liquid. So you'd have to switch the insulin with water. But basically what I would do is, but I wouldn't do that all straight away. So you'd slowly adjust the medication so that they are kind of getting these intermittent periods where sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off the medication. That should slowly reduce their health and then have an impact on their performance in school, which will then uh, mean that- Kill them. They're, they're Josh, Josh, that's terrible advice. All right. But that would- No, you cannot give that type of advice. Instead, I'll take the lead. I might be a school dropout, but trust me, I know how this works. Look at me. I'm doing fine. <laughs> Drop out of school. Problem solved. Yeah, I think we're, we're well underqualified for these, Jelly. Yeah. I, I think. For uh, the next one, I, actually, for the next one, for the first time, we might have one that we are overqualified for. Whatever qualification we might have. Even if we have, like, I don't even think we have one. You're just throwing another one, anyway. Get on with it, Jelly. This story is from J Chase, John, Jason, Jack, Drew, ja, Drew. Just get on with it, please. I, I'm looking for a name. Ja, Drew. There we go. No, with a J. J. Drew. Drew doesn't start with a J. Yeah, it can. Drew. Okay. S silent J. Drew. Mm. Rue. It's an English thing. Oh. All right. Okay. Drew says the following, when I was seven, I was eating so much that I had to take a massive poo. I realized it wouldn't come out. So I dug up my butthole and pulled it out. <laughs> then I proceeded to poo all over my hands. <laughs> and I wiped my hands. Was this producer Ben? Did you use a video? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not me. Sorry, sorry. I wiped my hands, but never washed them. I am pretty sure that later in the day, I started to bite my nails. Drew is seeking the following advice. He wants to know our opinion and whether he thinks he might have gotten some kind of poisoning from his own poo. Is now, that, I'm going to be very honest Is here. that the end of the story? Yes. I'm going to be very honest here. This is fine. This is completely normal. We all eat our own poo. Wait, no, we don't. We don't, no. Uh, I'm going to uh, scrap that. I'm going to give some different advice. Uh, don't eat poo. Poo equals bad. Poo equals smelly. Poo equals not so tasty. Don't eat it. I think that's pretty solid advice there, Jelly. And I think yeah. we're really actually kind of pushing you to your limits in terms of like... <laughs> Not pushing the poo out because they have to grab it with their hands. <laughs> I think we're pushing you to your limit in terms of like therapeutic uh, advice there. Really? And I just want to say congratulations on that one. That was really deep and you really dug deep for so that Josh, one. So Josh, when we started this therapy session... I right? do have one more, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. When we started this therapy session, we had the question, do you know if you are the arsehole or is it someone else? Mm. This person found out who it was. It was the poo. Yeah. Jelly, do you have any experience with digging poo out of your bottom? No, I don't. Then I don't think you're really qualified it. And, and no, I, I don't. don't either. So basically, uh, to that person, um, you need to get some help because that sounds disgusting. And um, yeah, there's, there's no two ways of... No two ways about it. That was awful. Um, and we're just going to move straight on. And I would like it if you never contact us ever again. So this is the final story that we have. The um, final countdown. And it's, it's uh, yeah, I think it's one that we can actually, this is one that we, I think we could really help someone on. Um, so what is their story? I have a condition called optic nerve atro atrophy. This atrophy? is a... Atrophy. Atrophy, yeah. Atrophy. This is a vision impairment condition that makes vision limited. It isn't fixable with glasses or other curries. 
<laughs> this is a make up. This is made up, right? No, unfortunately. I was born with this and it is quite annoying because there's lots of things I can't do because of this. I just realized they spelt um, fixable with glasses <laughs> or curries wrong. And it kind of makes sense if they can't see anything. What advice are they seeking? <laughs> what kind of jobs and such would be possible uh, that aren't relying on vision too much? All right. So first of all, this is a therapy session. I feel like for vision impairment, they should be going to a doctor. Yeah, but then no, no, they, they already know that they have got the problem, Jelly. We're helping. Their advice they're seeking is what kind of jobs would be possible that and, and you know, how could we help them in their career moving forward? All right. So anything that doesn't require your eyes. So let's just say definitely don't be a bus driver. You probably wouldn't even be able to apply for a license. Don't be a s doctor. Doctor? Doctor. Don't be a doctor, especially not a surgeon, because you might kill someone. Hmm. Um. What? Well, so what? Th what are the sort of things that we can suggest? Don't go into the military. Like, I think maybe we're we, gonna miss. We're gonna. <laughs> Sorry, what? It's not funny. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. However, the question was, what can this person do, All right? Mm. You can be a great audio listener, <laughs> reviewer. You can reviewer? review a podcast. We'll hire you. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to see the podcast, do they? Oh, but the list, the audio version. Right. Yeah. I don't, I think we need to think a bit more realistically about the workplace and things that they could do. Right. Um, there's plenty of options. Um, they could, um, oh, sign up to be a teacher. Oh, I've got a good one. You could be a teacher. They could be a dog walker. Cause I see lots of blind people walk dogs. Yeah. Guide dogs. <coughs> oh, is that what they are? Yeah. The guide dogs. I just thought blind people just like to walk dogs all the time. The guide dogs. Mm. Uh, what you could do depends. Uh, what you could do is you could definitely become a teacher and teach the world how great it is. How would they know? They've never seen it. But you don't need to see the world in order to know it's great. Is that true? Yes. Ask them. Would the teacher be able to know that the students have attended class? <laughs> <laughs> I think they just, they just like, she probably hasn't, oh no, she can't read the list of names. That's she true. probably asks. She probably asks everybody to say out if to, to, to call out if they're there. Like Johnny, say hey, hey, Jack, you, say hey. You know what hey. would be? I've just come up with a really good job. Actually, they could be a train driver. Because one of the biggest issues with being a train driver, right, is that um, sometimes you run people over. Because because trains, you can't really help it, right? They just go forwards. But if you're a blind train driver. You could, you could hit people with the train and you'll never even know. And so they wouldn't be as emotionally scarred. No? No. Anyway, everyone, I think that's a great point <coughs> to uh, end the therapy session on. Before um, you, before you start, can, I, can I ask a question to get some therapy? Is that okay? Is there actually like something you need? Yeah. Or? I actually, do you mind if I ask Jelly this one? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, just right. you're giving better advice. So, um, oh, that's so kind of you. Thank you. So if you had a podcast with Josh, right? Yeah. And then a few years down the line, he went and started a different podcast yeah. and then pretended he didn't remember your original podcast. How would you feel about that? Like, what would you do if that happened? Is this a hypothetical? Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, just if he, for if a he friend. Just, yeah, if he just disregarded everything he'd done with you in um, the past, podcast wise. Well, I would be offended. Right. And uh, personally, I would um, ask for a raise, mm. but not from, uh, but only from one of them. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I would, I would cry out loud. Mm. Yeah. And scream, I'm a loser. Damn. I lost this guy. Anyway, I think we should probably just stop making this all about you producer and continue on with the episode and talk more about us because we're the most important people in this room and actually one of the things jelly i was going to ask you about can i was, please take this off yeah yeah we can take this off now because i think that's yeah. um taken off the bow i, I the wanted glasses. i wanted to take an opportunity here to um basically <whistles> nice 
I want to take an opportunity to give the viewers a bit more of an insight into kind of the things that, you know, we've done. And, and we've done some interesting things. Um, Have we, Josh? Of, well, I think so. One of the things that we did is, uh, well, we, historically, we've been big gamers, right? We play a lot of games. But um, we've actually made some games in the past that some of you viewers might have uh, seen, maybe played. And I thought it'd be really interesting to give like a an insight into that sort of world. Do you remember the first video game I ever released? No. What was its name? I mean, is it, it's probably Jelly something, right? The first game I released was called Jelly Inc. And it was a mobile game where um, you were a little jelly mm. running down a little parkour, having to make it to the end. And the whole objective was throughout this parkour, you had to pick up little coins. And this coins, this, these coins you could spend on different outfits and power-ups. It was a free-to-play game. There were, I believe, no purchables in the game. Mm -hmm. We were just making money on ads. And that's that's pretty boring, Jelly. Hey, whoa, hey, man. But you know how well it did? Actually, like actually, what? this game did really well. I feel like I never promoted it. I've, maybe I made one or two videos on it, which arguably isn't a lot because we were recording twice a day or mm. uploading twice a day. It had millions or like maybe five million downloads. But so, but we've definitely dabbled our feet in games over time. You did that one. You also had another game, Jelly's Ventures. Jelly's Venture, which was a really um, fun one as well. Yeah, I've also dabbled with some games before. We had Doodler. Which, um, by the way, have you ever said that it's yours? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I said that. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that yeah. in my intro. What's Doodler? It was like a. Um, basically, we played. It actually came from. Um, we used to play a lot of Scribble. Yeah, and which we had issues with the game. So it's like a Pictionary game, uh, where you just compete to guess things. Yeah, and we had a lot of issues with it. And um, I, I don't know how uh, someone reached out to me and said um, that they were working on something similar. And it was right when I was constantly complaining about the settings on Scribble and like the all sorts of things. And I basically said to them, I "Was like, oh, that's interesting because we've been playing it." Would you be up for kind of working together on it? And I also want to make some suggestions on how to sort of make it a bit better from people who play it a lot. And that's kind of where that went. It never really turned into anything, but it was like... Did it take off, Josh? I, the game, I wouldn't say never really took off, but it was it was nice to be able to make content on something that we had a bit more connection to and control over for changing the settings and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it, it definitely... We never... You and me never really became developers. No. But what I think is a really interesting story for the viewers is actually Quibblecop. So Quibblecop actually has a game studio. So he made a game studio. Oh, wait, what does that mean? So me and Jelly, we just had like little casual collaborations, I'd say. True. We never made the games ourselves. No, We just maybe worked with some people. Yes. But Quibblecop, he did things a little bit different. It started um, with him making his own game. Which I think he just basically followed a YouTube tutorial. Yeah, yeah. He just followed and copy a pasted like a running yeah. game. Yeah. Which I think was just like a bit of a fun like exercise that he just did mm -hmm. and whatever. Now this I think the second version of that though is that he then came to talk to a game company that was kind of doing something and effectively he kind of hired those guys and made this thing called Webble Games. Um and this is when we were making videos and stuff. And then he decided he wanted to make because we were playing a lot of gang beasts and stuff and then like stick fight stick fight popped off yeah, yeah. and he wanted to make i think he was a big fan of like landfall those yes. people's developers of games he wanted to make kind of like the ultimate clickbait youtuber game um like gang beasts like which is like a physic based like wrestling Vibrant fighting colors. Yeah, with guns and put it all together into a game um with these these people that he hired and made a natural game studio on it and uh, it's an interesting one as well from our perspective because mm. um, when when this is the sort of thing we've experienced before in the past, but not it's not as simple as you might think being in a group and the individual people doing their do own thing, things yeah. and then want the group to kind of promote it. It's yeah. a bit complex. So one day he told us he's working on this game. The next day... We, we didn't hear anything for a long time. And then mm. all of a sudden we hear, hey, the game's going to be released soon. Mm. Let's record a video on it. Yeah. Which 
we did because you know we support Quabble Cop and his new business venture, and, and I'm not going to charge money worth, for it. Worth you know? mentioning that we've always had a bit of a policy against kind of moving money between us. We don't, yeah. we don't like, we never liked doing that. No. Um, so yeah, so it was if he asked us to do something, it would be us just doing it, not like um, he wouldn't be like, oh, I'll pay you guys to do it or anything like that. No. So I recorded, or we all recorded a video on on this game that he made or got made. Uh, I'm in his own studio, and it popped off. It went extremely viral. What do you mean by it popped off? I think that video has... The like, video popped off. The video off. Not the, the game? Not the game, no. The video probably made more money by ad revenue. The video is... So this is the video that Jelly made on Quibble Cop's game. That one probably created more revenue than that game ever did. Are you able to ballpark the money? <laughs> I, I, I'm not forcing you into it. I'm just asking. Hey, you know, I'll say how many views it's got, and then people can think for themselves. Would it, it would be, it would definitely be in the, it's comfortably into the five figures, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, comfortably. Well, that's, 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 that's still interesting. The video has, I believe, 15 million views. Yeah. It might be more these days. Yeah. Which is a video on Krabble Cop's game. People loved it. Now, now something happened and, uh, though, right? Yeah, so that was the weird part. Quibble Cop kind of. Uh, well, no, you tell me. You tell me. Well, I don't know why. Maybe he had like some beef with his own developers, or he just simply didn't want to continue. But the moment we basically released these videos and essentially promoted this game for free to millions of people, he pulled the plug out of the game. Mm. Just killed it. Just never released an update, never um, showed any more interest into well, that no, game. Well, no, I think he definitely claimed, like, did claim success for it. And, and actually, <laughs> the irony of this entire thing... You don't claim success when you have to pull the plug. Well, he claimed success by saying that your video did really well and claimed Wait, the success so of your video. What you're saying is that Quabble Cup thinks my video went well because of the game. Yeah. Then why did his video not do well? well or your video? Well, there you go. But he definitely claimed success through your video. But the irony of all of this is the game was good. The game was great. And he killed it. Dude, I, I even think Twitch streamers played it and like a ton of people played it not knowing it was Crabble Cop's we, game. We said this is called Havocado, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's called Havocado. Yeah, so yeah. And it I think fantastic that game. was crazy to me. Like, he just killed that We're game. We're promoting it here again for free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just killed it again, Crabble Cop. I think he might have even put the price up on it as well. Did he? I, maybe. But yeah, and it's interesting. I actually saw a YouTuber play it not that long ago, quite recently actually. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one, and I think uh, there's obviously you know complexities around it. But then Quibble Cop is still that's that game studio still is functioning. So I don't know how. What was that? Four years ago? I remember a side story that that something that happened with my video. So my video went so viral on Quibble Cop's game. Mm. that YouTube decided to put it inside of their YouTube Rewind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So YouTube Rewind is like an end of year kind of summary celebration of content on YouTube. Yeah. And that video was put into there. So a, a segment of my video was being displayed by YouTube themselves <coughs> as being one of the most viewed uh, video game videos. Yeah. Which was Jordy's game. Um, and uh, like, I, I saw the game studio kind of taking credit for the video, for the video landing on, uh, YouTube Rewind. Mm. And they kind of celebrated it as their success. Yeah. Which I was like, I, like they never, like they don't have to thank me, but Hey, you know, like. That's interesting. And it'd be interesting uh, to see what the viewers think. Cause obviously they put a lot of work into making that game, but ultimately you made the video. So where does that, and they killed the game. So I mean, let's be honest, Josh. You know, do you think Fortnite would have blown up if creators didn't play it? No, I mean, de in, fact, in we, fact, we played it early. In fact, most people don't know this, but yeah, before Fortnite was a battle royale, they were spending so much money on creators playing that game. We got paid to play Fortnite before battle royale. Before existed. ever, yeah, we actually did a brand deal. Yeah, um, which is and, crazy. And, and, and so these marketing strategies work. You know, like it, it works. 
for game companies. But to... did it work? Because we we never even promoted the thing that made Fortnite successful. No, 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 no. But I'm not saying we did it, Josh. But I'm saying right. Fortnite in general or Epic Games back then, they they really knew what they were doing and they were heavily targeting their game mm. towards an audience all across the platform, yeah. right? And so that's why I'm saying it works. And that's why I'm like, you know, who's who's taking cre credit for what here when when my video goes viral yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's an interesting one but D now does my video go viral because just purely because of the game or does it go viral because of the entertaining content that we created inside thanks thanks to the game yeah i mean it's and it's also more complex when you've got multiple people doing the same thing yeah and those don't go as as as, as successful but I don't know, it's an interesting story that viewers might not know. Jordi has, Quibble has continued that studio on today and they are now still currently working on a game. They, I don't know they've if not say what it is. But... They've not released... Um, I think they've... he said that he's been working on it for like four years. I mean, it's a skateboarding game. That's, I think he's... Can, did he say that well, publicly? He, well, well, I've said it. <laughs> <laughs> but Skateboard! Whoop! It's a long time to work on a game, so it better be good. It better be Skate 4. <laughs> and hopefully they don't kill it as soon as it comes out the door. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, so. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's just an interesting insight, isn't it? Yeah. Into Maybe, hopefully, he'll want to come on to, to tell us about this game one day. Maybe. You know? I mean, it, we'll just t say it's bad. <laughs> we'll invite Craner at the same time. We'll see about that. Yeah. So, Jelly, before uh, we wrap up, there is one thing we wanted to uh, a little reveal. We're just going to say it. There, if you might not have noticed, there was a third person in a previous duo episode. So it wasn't a duo episode. No, there was a third person in a suit. And we basically just thought it would be funny. We thought it would be funny to just have someone there the whole time, one of our team that just didn't really do anything. And, uh, and we didn't acknowledge them. And we it. didn't acknowledge them. It was like a last minute kind of decision. It was just funny. Yeah. But... Something, there, happened. something did happen. We actually cut out of the episode. Oh, no. um, oh, our team hilarious. member basically fell asleep while we were recording. And <laughs> both of us just, it completely threw us off. You were chatting about something completely random. And, uh, but you were sort of like, you were noticing he was falling asleep. So you were trying to like distract, you were trying to just keep talking. Yeah. And um, he was doing this. But I just like, yeah. So and I, I, nodding his head i don't want to say anything else what we want to do is i think we're just going to roll it roll the clip where he falls asleep yep that i wasn't up earlier to have breakfast with him but i'm not up at six yeah <laughs> anyway i think um all in all it went really well <laughs> i think <laughs> <laughs> okay. sorry i'm distracted <laughs> should we discuss the elephant in the room or should we not the what the elephant in the room. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't anymore. <laughs> Is he asleep? Are you asleep? I am so distracted. I thought he was sleeping. Where, did you sleep? I <laughs> <laughs> fell asleep. Woo. I mean, uh, poor guy. Jenny, why did we cut it out? Um, well, because it didn't fit the video. Yeah. Right? It, it, it was so funny. Like, it was... And, and what was hilarious is that you just started talking about the, just the I dumbest... noticed, like, maybe two minutes before we started laughing about it that he, that he had fallen asleep. Yeah. And I, I didn't know what to do. You were so feeling, like, I was, so hot. And I thought, I, th I think you noticed it as well. So we were just, I was just like, ah, I didn't I talk, couldn't, I, talk, I couldn't I hold it together. Like, I, I, basically, I was starting to street screaming to the mic for him to wake up. You, he basically, his head started dipping forwards and backwards. And we, he's basically in our sight line. Yeah. And I just, like, I couldn't, I couldn't ignore it. And, um... And I just, yeah. Dude, and the funny hilarious. thing is, is that he, for the first par portion of the clip, he still hasn't woken up. No, yeah. So we've like realized he's asleep. <laughs> and then it was like, he like wakes up like that. Um, so what, what does that tell about us, Josh? That clearly we are great for falling asleep to. Oh. So there's some advice. Yeah. And what happened um, to the guy? Uh, I don't know. Probably someone should check on him. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I think we should wrap up today's podcast session here, Josh. Yep. 
it's been a great session, Jelly. And uh, did you enjoy yourself? I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I especially enjoyed it because we got to learn so much about the viewers today. Oh, and make sure to go and harass your favorite YouTubers to tell them to go onto the Two Thirds podcast. That would be great. Don't harass, just spam. I wouldn't, I would, I would say spam. Yeah. I mean, some of the things that we mentioned in this therapy episode, you can use those skills to, uh, to, no, 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 no. Okay. What you can do is follow us on Spotify, like the video, help us out, you know, give us some, give us some love because we love you. <laughs> that was cringy, wasn't it? That's a great place to end it, Jelly. Should we end it on a high five? No. <laughs>